If you were going to write an angel check to one of them, so this is like, the criteria here is, oh, I think it's defensible. I think it's a really good idea and an important use case. I see an opportunity to actually find product market scale and evolve past this. Like, what do you think has that potential? Like, which one of these in like a year and a half are we like interviewing the founder on the show because he or she is like completely killing it? Darn. I think it's minor or for me, it's it's. On today's show, you're going to discover some brand new AI tools that are going to change your life. We got submissions from entrepreneurs all over the world. We picked our favorites and we're going to react to their demo videos live in real time today. I'm Kip Bodner, the CMO of HubSpot, joined as always by Kieran Flanagan, the CMO at Zapier, and this is Marketing Against the Grain. Let's get into today's show. Kieran, we, we have been waiting to do this episode for, for a long time. Our boy Ben Tossel over at Ben Bites hooked us up and we did a call for entries for his newsletter readers. He, he has an awesome AI newsletter. And we wanted to hear from companies who wanted to be featured and talked about on the show. And basically what we did is we picked five companies and we had them do a video of their AI startup. And we we're going to react to them in real time. We have seen none of these videos. We know nothing of what's about to happen. We're gonna check out these videos. We're gonna give them the real talk of what we think. And we're gonna give them some free marketing advice. The thing we love to do, Kip, is we love to look at early stage companies. We love to look at AI. We love to figure out how early stage companies are going to grow. And I think this is the perfect combination of all those things. We've got five incredible tools, five incredible companies. So I'm excited to like get some more deal flow going on marketing <laughs> against the green. Yeah, so so Kier, so Kier and I are going to do a fun thing. We're going to pick which company we would write an angel check for. What like what's our favorite basically from this? And I would also say, Kieran, we got to give the disclaimer. This is going to be an awesome episode. It's going to be better if you watch it on YouTube. Better on YouTube, right? Because there's going to be a lot of video. We're going to be showing the products. Better if you check it out on the Marketing Against the Grain YouTube channel. While you're there. You know you love listening to Marketing It's Green. Hit that subscribe button so you can get that YouTube show. We're dropping two shows a week, soon to be three shows on YouTube and on Spotify and wherever you get your podcasts every week. Kim, I have a fun opener oh, before gosh. we get into tools. Darren, cue up my favorite Twitter AI thread of the week, Darren. This was killer, right? Like, Oh my gosh, mind blown. Right Here, you, you shared this video with me and it's Carvana used AI to, to hyper-personalize 1.3 million videos for their customers. Everyone got a personal video featuring the car that they bought, featuring details about them, things that they knew about that person, the location, time of year they bought it, what they, what they know that they liked and, and everything. What did we say a week ago? What was gonna be the major unlock for marketers? Marketers, the first lock, it's not text, it's gonna be video. This is an incredible example of that, which is like when you can create mass amounts of personalized video it's really a game changer they had these, these massive spreadsheets with all of the data from their customers it was a real technical undertaking but the experience to the end customer was freaking magical yeah and that's i think the, the, the my, my ultimate summary of what ai does is like there's a lot of crazy things happen in the background background to make the like one two minute interaction feel like completely amazing. All right, all right. We, we, we gotta get into the tools. I think producer Darren's probably going crazy because we're just like, Kieran and I catch it up. This week has been- Bananas. A fucking slog. So this is tool number one. So this is a tool called Capsule. And Capsule is an AI video tool. And that's what we know. And Darren, roll the demo. AI Studio runs right in your browser with no apps or extensions required. Here the I've already uploaded good. this interview with Elon Musk, and I want to add some post-production to it. You can see on the left that Capsule has already transcribed the entire video into text. So now okay. let's say I want to add an intro to the beginning of my video. In like order to do that, all I need to do is select the entire segment where I want the intro to be, and then choose the title card style. Capsule summarizes the entire clip into just a few words and creates this beautiful intro animation for me in a matter of seconds. Let's edit this. And Whoa. Let's try each style is summarized is slightly differently with different results. Now I want to layer in an image over this section. By default, oh, Capsule uses sick. AI to generate images based on the subject matter. It's auto-generated images You can also go too. in and assist the AI a little bit to get more specific looking results. 
No, you can actually prompt the oh, AI wow. to fix this. I like that you can prompt within it. That is sick. That is sick. Kieran, we just we just saw a capsule. It's a good demo, man. Whoever made that demo, first of all, knows what they're doing. Props to you on the product marketing side of things. I know I dog product marketing sometimes. <laughs> that was some good, good product marketing. And Kieran, there's there's another tool that's been around for a long time in the audio space called Descript. Right. And this basically reminds me of a Descript for video. And video and Descript, I think, has rolled out some video features and everything. But there were some features here that I really, really loved. Like you and I believe video is the future. And what you can basically have is take raw video footage and turn it into a very professional looking video with AI. Right. It makes editing much, much easier. I do wonder for all of these tools, you still need like great video to build on top of. What I started to see is like a lot yes. of stock photography style video that kind of looks more professional, but at the end of the day, it's not that engaging. So it's still like hard to create engaging video, but it's getting much, much easier for marketers to like edit it. And what I loved here is like, you could actually do that through natural language. And so you need minimal amount of video editing skills to be able to do this stuff. But like the core part of the video, like the actual being able to create an incredible video, I still think that's like the hardest part and the unlock for marketers. My core criticism of this demo is that, is what you just said, Karen, it's the video itself. They picked this like kind of boring, stodgy Tesla video. Right versus like a really cool dynamic YouTube show or short form video or something like that. I mean, let me let me drop you my marketing idea for Capsule. You ready for this? I think they should obsess, they, they should find the best couple of like viral TikTok YouTube creators, work with them to make sick, sick viral videos. And then we know like, especially on TikTok, if you have a video that goes viral, if you create related videos, the, the uptick on them is really strong. And then make a follow-up video about how that video was hugely successful and it was made in like five minutes with this tool. Yeah. Wouldn't that crush? Yeah, you kind of need to, you need to bring it to life. The other thing they could do is like, they could give this tool to a marketer and have a marketer create their own personal brand through that tool and detail like how they've used that tool to create a personal brand through TikTok. You know, go from zero followers to 100,000 followers and get that marketer some coaching from other TikTok influencers and use Capsule as a tool Ooh, to I create like that. All, that, all that videos. Kind of like a like mini documentary of going from zero to 100,000 followers in as quick as time as possible. And I think it's like, how do you use that tool and bring it to life? Because the tool is cool, but really the output is the, the benefits is the selling point. Yeah. So. First of all, I love the use case. I love that we started with video. We think video and AI is going to be huge. That was a really strong start, Kieran. Capsule is in the running so far. We're only one in for my favorite submission. They definitely hit the mark. So let's let's check out tool two. I really like this one. All right. We're about to take a check out my ask AI, which basically helps you do work within your organization. Kieran, you just said it's like my knowledge work. I want to show you how you can build your own chat GPT that has access to your own content yeah, that can help your customers or colleagues get fast, accurate answers to all their questions. Now we're going to build a HubSpot log assistant. We're going to set it in a conversational Ooh. mode. And we're going to upload the like entire the HubSpot mock. Oh, oh darn, I was looking for this what yesterday. A tool like this yesterday. <laughs> yes, this is web pages dope. From across that blog site. Then we're going to push that content into our Ask AI. Oh, this is sick. Then we can start asking new questions. Just before we do that, we're going to quickly add it onto the HubSpot marketing site, just with a little code snippet. And HubSpot blogs are going this nice. Is a sick demo. Customers or users can start interacting with your content in a completely new way, leveraging the technology behind ChatGPT, then to find answers to really specific questions, questions where the answers may be spread across multiple blog posts, and also acting as a tool to them to find new content. You were asking about how to improve page authority. Nice. Not only is it giving us a rich answer from some of the blog pages. Oh, okay. It's it's it to another full site. The user wants to yeah, that was sick. So the, so the version of that that I was looking for, I'm not sure you can do, if they can do internal data sources or it's just external data sources. I love the way you could just like grab the entire blog. The thing I was looking to do was we have a, in Zapier, you know, I was talking, we have the wiki. It's like a version of that. It's called async, but like everyone documents yeah. everything they're doing. And I was trying to find for a specific area of the business, I was trying to find all previous context of things that people have done to try to impact that area. And so I was like, if I could just suck all this data into a chatbot, I could just query the chatbot to ask it about like all of the things that have been done in the past, how they were successful, how they were not successful. And so being able to take a data source and plug it straight into a chat interface and have AI be able to just like respond to you, I think is an incredible use case and they're doing it in an external way. I don't know if they can do it internal 
internally as well. I think the external use case is really cool. I think the internal use case is even cooler and more valuable, yeah. but it's a lot more friction, right? Because there's a lot of security right. and permissioning and everything for internal data. So this is probably a much easier way for my Ask AI or any company related to it to kind of start. What I would say about what they're doing is it's a good demo because it's quick to the point, like you know the value, right? The challenge I have with it is the actual use case isn't that good. Like it's magical, but like having a content bot on your blog is good and interesting. And like, we'll probably do it. Maybe we'll even use, use them from the sick demo. It's not like a game changer for your business growth no. or your productivity. No. And that's the challenge is that they need to, my advice to them is they need to take this, what they've learned is this kind of initial beachhead into this market and figure out other more valuable use cases, which is around like, how do you have really good product chat to monetize? Can you take all the product detail pages and, ha and help people monetize their core website much better? That's actually way more valuable than content pages. Not that content pages aren't important, but like there are other kind of even core website use cases that they could go to here. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine in the UK use case where the data is so unique that actually that use case is valuable. I do think like one cool idea if they just want to use this as a way to get traction is to do like the thing that we have to do is like an entire episode of character dot AI because it's just such an incredible oh, yeah. company. But they could do a blog version where they just get the most popular blogs and they have like a series of chatbots trained in those blogs. So I can go to the website and Ooh. talk to the HubSpot blog. I can talk to the Zapier blog. I can talk to like all of the biggest blogs in the world through this chat interface. Or you can just basically, you can go there and select any blog and create a chatbot across that blog and share it with and share it with someone. Yeah, so I, like, here's, I, here's a blog for, here's an AI for like this blog. Go, 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 go wild. Well, you, we have all these news aggregators, artifacts, Flipboard. Somebody should make a bot version is what you're saying. It's right. like, cool. Let me pick my favorite sources and do that. You know what would be sick is like, hey, I subscribe to these 10 newsletters. Five of them are on Substack. Five of them are free. I want them every week ported into exactly this database yep. I pay for. And I just want to be able to query this bot for anything I want to learn from those people. Right. Like that would be so sick. I was looking I think for that. There are for some public versions of that that they could host. Yeah. That would basically be marketing. And then they could go work with those creators to say, hey, you've got, I've got your entire email backlog as a bot, and you should start promoting that to your subscribers as a way to keep engaged with your content, your ideas. Right. So I think this use case is potentially a cool use case, but I think they have to find one that they can monetize. That is the perfect summary. Very, very promising. There's more risk in this one being successful than the capsule business being successful because the capsule use case, I think, is a little bit more obvious and a little bit more pertinent, especially to, to marketers, which is where you and I are coming from. All right. Next, we are about to check out Kaju.ai, which is a AI-powered platform that converts Figma designs into code in minutes. So this is awesome. This is a very important category really cool use case i'm interested to see how they're actually pulling it off could you good morning everyone um there are two ways to create components and pages or web experiences in kaju.ai one is from hand-drawn sketch or you can import your designs and convert it to code from figma so i'm gonna just <laughs> yeah, that's uh, cool. showing you both so i will create a new Nice. This is how I want to design websites. Component here on paint, so just in sick. my touch screen. I love, he's, so he's I'll just doing a quick wireframe, literally, image, like in like then 10 seconds. A heading. This is like my wireframes. I'll add some text yeah, and a call to <laughs> action. <laughs> we'll save this. All right. Now it's getting converted into Whoa, uh, the responsive. code. You can see it's all the visual elements and it's all responsive. AI made all the responsive decisions that you can, for, of course, alter. I can also apply my interactive design system to it to have a different styling. So you can see my button is red. Oh, this is sick. You can it's change dope. that heading to different variants from my design system. So here you go. You have your components. Now, the other way of oh, creating Figma import. components with Kaju is importing from Figma. So I'm going to go to All right. So he's Figma got an iPhone and, product um, page. I'll copy this apple.com uh, homepage banner. I just breaks my code. It also with Kaju.ai into components. I'll click here. Oh, that breaks my brain, dude. Banner. 
and then here you go. Um, you have this banner from Figma. I will apply a different design system here called the Apple design system to get the proper San Francisco font and you will apply wow. it. And so I could have been a coder all along. Always, I could have been a coder course, all along. Yeah, well, I mean, you could have been a coder and just steal, stole React the best designs, customize them, and put them the up <laughs> here. Generated from scratch Darn, with AI. Dope. This is dope. Um, and it will be opened in Code Sandbox. So this is our banner. This is the Next.js code. And this is all the styling and classes. And in a couple of minutes, I have my component ready, either from a hand-drawn sketch or that, with Figma. And it's all with the power of Kajoo.ai. Thank you. That cool. was that was sick. We didn't talk as much because we thought that, I think, because we think that was pretty freaking sick. Yeah. Like being uh, able to go from, this is a little bit like what we saw with OpenAI's demo when they had the hands they had the hand-drawn sketch and they converted that into a web page. I've seen a couple of examples of this through Figma, actually, where I've seen people be able to take design and turn them into a code. So like, I think it's a really cool use case. Like if you can just go from sketch to code, it really does You can does go from juice. sketch to like some Next.js code right. in minutes. In minutes. Like but it's just, not, and it's not, but it's not just sketch, right? It's like, this is what you and I have been talking about, how everything's going to commoditize. Right. Like, let's say y you were like, oh, my team at Zapier crushed it. And we have this really awesome page that's converting really well. Anybody could literally just go copy the format of that page. Just put that page in Figma, import it to Kaju and boom, like have the code, have it live on their site in you, minutes. Yeah. You can take elements of any page That's and just crazy. quickly take, take code and put them back yeah, together convert, again. Convert it to their style, get it into this platform, convert it into, into their style and, and take the code and get it, get it live. That's right. pretty sick. I think this is like the most, out of the three that we've talked about, this is the most, I think, transformational category 100%. right now, maybe not in the future, but just what's happening right now, which is the ability to turn all of these things into code and have the AI actually write that code and co-pilot with you is like transformational in terms of how many people are going to be able to do more things than they have been able to do in the past. Like they're going to be able to actually just how many more people can create things. And I think that Figma is actually, I'm interested, like this seems to be a pretty good tailwind for Figma because I've seen a lot of these kind of companies develop through as Figma as a repository, which is like really cool. Like Figma are in all of the different kind of demos and all of these different products. I, I totally agree. All right. If we were going to give this gentleman at Kaju a piece of marketing advice, what would you have him do? So I would do, this is going to be killer. I would do a, the five minute web off. Have you ever heard of the bake off? Do you get that in the States? Like There's the a Great British Bake Off? Yeah, the Great British Bake Off. Like, what, like I live deal. under a fucking rock? Of course I've heard we're gonna that. Call, we're going to call this the Great Website Bake Off, and you get five minutes. We're going to have a giant competition. You get five minutes, and all you can use is Kaju to create the best website oh, from a sketch. Oh, make it a competition. Oh, and whoever has the best website, we're going to put them all on a web. We're going to put them in a, in a site where you can thumb up and thumb down. And whoever's top is going to get some incredible price. And it actually shows the value of the product and is a fun way to do it. Yeah. The the other thing that they could do, I forget, there's an awesome Twitter account that I can never remember the, the name of, but the guy takes Figma images of popular websites or social apps or whatever, and then makes jokes with them, you know, like redesigns them to make them funny. That's the other thing you would do is oh, you basically cool. use, use your platform to basically take this thing that people no and make like a meme funny version of it that will and then basically then again show people how you did it in that platform like i think those are a couple ideas that you would go to like actually take this product and, and take it to market it was sick yeah I'm it's gonna... like my favorite twitter account is do you ever see that he's really famous the guy who set up a fake account for to do free photoshop and so oh, someone yeah. will send him like an image and say, can you Photoshop this? And he, photo he photoshops it in a com completely crazy way and sends it back to them. That's like, <laughs> he's just a G. I must we, we will try and get that and put it in the show notes. We Humor sells. All right. So we're getting into tool number four, which is where to AI. And this is a AI power travel tool. That's what we know. Travel AI. I love to travel. I love AI. I'm interested. Let's check it out. First up. Um, my favorite, the first feature that was added to the app was Dreamer. Darn, that's an Irish you can person. See how you can click plan my trip. <laughs> Let's go. I want to do that. Kieran's like, I like this app. Here. He's Irish. <laughs> the month you want to travel. It's my favorite. 
how long you'll be away this weekend getaway in this case i'm going to go with my friends uh, i have a flexible budget maybe let's think city break too much clicking why is this so much clicking? It's a lot of clicking. Why are we clicking mm, so much? Probably for me, stick with Europe. We don't click anymore in AI. And then a couple of options, optional, none for me. We're typing less clicking. So now the AI is generating some destinations. And we provide 10 up front, just in case you've been to a few. So I'm going to pick Vienna. Well, I want to go to Vienna. I do want to go to Vienna. you can see here, Austria. it's generating a short overview of Vienna for you. We'll per we can plan out our winery and beach trip. Yeah, I would like that. Have you ever been to Vienna? I've never been to Vienna. Some overview, I want to go. good to know info, temperature, local currency, precipitation. Okay. Must stay alive. A photo if it's available. We get that from Unsplash. Also, then it generates an example itinerary if you were to go. So like what your three days in this case would look like. And at the bottom here, you can see the previous destinations. Oh, I like the itinerary. To see what, I like uh, the itinerary. To one of those destinations would be. I always love the fun little facts or the must try food. It's a lot of text. Again, you see the photo. And at the end, actually, there's top tips as well. You have the ability then to generate, save your link, and this will generate a URL unique to you. And you can share your itinerary with your friends then. It's whack that it's just like a sharing URL and it's not like more like social engaged and you're not like planning the trip together. But right. I mean, it's super early. Stuff. Yeah, it's super early. I don't know why there's any clicking because. <laughs> Can't you just do this all through chat? I don't know why there was any clicking. <laughs> why you sound so angry about it. No, I just think that like we're like what what are we what's happening with AI? We're moving away from click 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 to like chat chat chat. Click 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 chat chat chat. That's a great summary. So, but if you, if you look at where to AI, like I think travel is going to be an awesome use case for AI. One hundred percent planning packing. Again, I want AI to like tell me exactly what to pack, make my reservations for me. Do you know what that this should isn't be? That cool Can't... because it's you know what it should be. It what? should just be like, I can send it a year, like, you know, when you're on booking.com or you're trying to plan your trip and you like look at a hotel that you like, you yeah. should just be able to send it the URL of the hotel and then it will figure out the destination where that hotel is and say, if you stay at this hotel, this is what you should do for the next three days. Oh, that would be sick. So it's planned around like the hotel. Cause that's the thing that I do is I'm like, oh, like I want to stay at this hotel. What would I do if I stay at that hotel? Like what's near to it? What's cool? So I can just like send it a URL and it can build me a plan based upon the URL rather than kind of like click this and click that and click this and click that. It should actually be like, oh, okay, if you're booking your hotel before you like click book, send me your URL and I'll show you like the like how cool it is to stay around that area. And what are the things you can do if you want to stay like three days, yeah, four days? That, that would be a sick V2 of this app. That would be much better. That would that'd be pretty awesome. I, I love in all of that. I don't want the viewers to lose that. Kieran, you are the cutting edge of technology. You're using every new AI tool out there. Yet you're still using Booking.com for your travel. It makes me really <laughs> laugh. What? What? Really? Is that bad? Oh shit! I didn't know. I know. That. I don't know. What's it's an alternative? Just like, it's just really funny. You're not using some like cool travel startup. I know. I know. Where you're actually. not like just booking I directly I through like... the resort or whatever. It's like no, I'm just checking out Booking.com. It's I'm funny. Lazy, I don't know why. I'm a lazy traveler. I'm a lazy traveler. Um, the thing that he is missing out there on the marketing side, Kieran, is that. Trips are inherently a social activity, and he should have 100%. a. There should be a viral coefficient to this product, where people are inviting others to this trip planning, discovering the tool, and he should be. There's no like user sign up. It is very bare bones. If he applied just some of the core growth principles, I think we'd be shocked at how many users he would have for such a simple application. Right, should be a mobile app, basically. Send a new URL, it plans your inventory, then you can send that to a friend and say, is this cool as we book? Okay, so that was a cool tool. I like your V2 version idea of it better than what's currently happened, but it's clear it's super, super early on. All right, last tool of the day that we're going to check out a demo of is DeepSheet. DeepSheet is innovative data analytics uh, that allows users to analyze and visualize data by chatting with it in plain English. So we've talked a little bit about this with Code Interpreter from OpenAI does some of this. Let's check out like what if DeepSheet is better, worse, like let's, let's see. Hey there, this is Dylan and I'm gonna show you a demo of DeepSheet. DeepSheet is an AI tool that lets you interrogate your data. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna show you a demo of DeepSheet. I, I just need a minute, I just need a minute. <laughs> Should I just keep going or play it again? <laughs> No, leave it in. It's awesome. That, that no, it's an not issue, an issue. It's great. It's great. It's just I need to be, I need to prepare, prepare myself for it. That's all. I will show you a demo for a dipshit. Yeah, <laughs> just keep playing. Just keep playing. So let's get started. The first thing you gotta do is you gotta select the data set to analyze. So you click here, you select your data, and you upload it. 
once the data has finished uploading, you can actually give your data set sample and validate that it's correct. Oh, that's you sick. can see here a few of the columns and a few rows. You can see, okay, it's looking good. So let's I like that, that you could just so the first thing check your data you uploaded. Simply do a right blood. Oh, 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 I, oh, I'm using this. I'm using this today. So this, we will say here that it's going to generate a uh, nice I love this use case. News here. These are the prices of our Apple and Google from 2006. To Darn, I'm actually, I'm actually signing up. He just changed the summarization like that. That was sick. Prices change over time. I'm literally so signing up <laughs> right now. Yeah. yeah that's that's like, shut up, take my money. Take my money. I need this. I have some data analysis. I really need to do now today. Where do I get this site? He's not, where is he? He's not on Google. I can't find the site. Like, what's the URL? Dude, you had me at like, you had me at like natural query of data and building charts that easily. Let's do it. Yeah, there, there's so much about that demo video. First of all, I think he wins for the simplest, most straightforward demo video that is love effective. That. That's what I love. He, he was like, I'm not fucking around here. I'm just yeah. going to do a 60 second loom video and show you that my app is dope. He's like, hey, dipshits, look, this is what, this is what my fucking, this, like, this is what my tool does. Deep sheet Shut the fuck up and sign up. one of my up. favorite <laughs> things ever. And I would like a, I would like a dipshit t-shirt. <laughs> Like deep sheet on the back, dip shit on the fr or on the <laughs> the dip front, and just like it's the make it a whole joke. He should he should lean into it. It's it's gonna be great marketing. You love this use case though. I do love this use case. I do wonder like it's a hard space because it's in the same space as Code Interpreter. I don't have access to Code Interpreter, and I've been waiting. So that's why I'm well, actually so I nobody love this has access to Code Interpreter. It's in alpha. Yeah. If I was if I was this gentleman. I would go fast here. I think there is a short-term opportunity to build a real user base because... Integrate to Looker, integrate to Amplitude, integrate to GA, be able to just like integrate to their provided it, natural it, language integrate interface to and talk all to the ways of getting data in and out. Yeah, Google First Sheets. First of all, but I think, I, Kieran, I think more importantly, how we, I think like the travel app we just talked about, th this app could have a massive viral coefficient, which is like, hey, Kip here, check out some data. And oh, by the way, you, you can link back to this link in Deep Sheet where you can go and manipulate that same data the way you want and challenge how I looked at it. Yeah. That'd yeah, be yeah, yeah. sick. Yeah. This is a. Right? Like, you, you'd be like, oh, look, how, look at how I checked out this data from the pod. Your thumbnails suck, dude. And I'd be like, no, 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 no way. And I'd go back in and I'd be like, oh, no, no, no. It's actually your glasses are the problem. Stop wearing glasses, Kieran. And like we like the back and forth that you could create on that would be Dude, awesome. Dude, I've got a YouTube. That people just I, don't do an Excel. You, so you know the YouTube. You remember we, we used to love the sports one where you had the the two people debating. What was the sports one where you like used to tell me like they would just get on and they would have five minutes of debate. It was like a well known. There was one called Ariel and the Bad Guy, which was the M MMA oh, version. Oh, you're talking like Pardon the Interruption. But there was some. There was one that started. I think in American football, and they would get on and they would just like debate for like five minutes yeah. about a certain topic. You could have the dipshits oh, like debate data via <laughs> deep sheet. <laughs> yes. uh, who, who is the dipshit? Because the like, two dipshits would be the two people the on the thing. The dipshits are the hosts. They're, they're, look, the in all seriousness, that one that's not a bad idea, and I, I would probably do that. This, the other thing I would do here is you would have a sick data YouTube show where you just would take any publicly available data and just drop an episode every day or every week that is just like, cool, here's the census data. Here's whatever data that people think is boring. I found like five crazy fascinating things about it. Yeah. Reddit, Twitter. Oh, done. yeah. You would just totally Two best take places. over Reddit and Twitter. Okay. For our first AI demo day, whatever we're calling this, those were five sick tools. There were five we, sick we, tools. All right. If you if you were going to write an angel, angel check to one of them, so this is like uh, the criteria here is, oh, I think it's defensible. I think it's a really good idea and an important use case. I, I see an opportunity to actually find product market scale and evolve past this. Like, what do you think has that potential? Like, which one of these in like a year and a half are we like interviewing the founder on the show because he or she is like completely killing it? Darn. I think it's Deep Sheet, minor Deep Sheet or Kaju. For me, it's, it's Kaju. I think probably because I'm nervous about Deep Sheet and Code Interpreter. And I'm also nervous that most analytics companies will build a version of that for their own product. So I think I'm going to go Kaju. That would be my angel check. Sounds like you're the same. Do you want me to tell I you am. what where AI would have invested? 
Because actually, yeah. it's pr- pretty interesting. So I give. Oh, you, a- oh yeah, you 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 did this right. Yeah. You gave all the the AI. You gave GP, all the chat, information. GPC, the five companies. And what what did it say? So I told it it was an incredible seed stage and founder VC. I actually told it to like model itself of like well known seed stage VC. So I give it some ideas and who that could be. Those people could be. And then I give it all of this all of this information. So the first time, let me give you like the what happened here because actually it's really interesting. The first time I give it 100k and said you can invest 100k in a single company or all companies, but you have to say why you did that. The first time it invested 100k spread evenly across each and every company, which was 20k, and I came back and I said I I think that's really bad. I think you're being a really bad VC. Like why would you do that? They're not all. I don't think your like logic is very good. And it came back and apologized, and then it made a really good decision. It actually put 60 in Keju and 40 in Deep Sheet. Which is actually what? what I would have done with my 100K. What? <laughs> and it gave really good ideas. It said the, they were like more defensible, use cases broader, probably a bigger TAM. It's like, geez, that's pretty good. Like, and then the one thing they said, the one thing it said, which was really interesting, it said, like, the one thing I would really want to know that I don't know is I would want to know more about the founders. I was like, yeah. Yes. Dope. That's pretty sick, dude. It turns out that. Non-emotional decisions AI is really good at, and investing is normally a pretty rational, non-emotional decision. Agreed. Agreed. Most of uh, it is actually rational. All right. I, think, I also think we dropped some pretty good half-baked marketing ideas along the way for all these companies. I hope to see some of them actually happen. I know these are very early stage companies. Good luck to all of them. I think like you all ha- are solving interesting problems. Like Just think through the growth. Think through the use case and the value of those use cases to your customers. And hopefully we'll be like talking to all of you founders on future episodes, like hearing how you just totally killed it and what marketing you did that really worked. But Kieran, we had AI video editing, data analysis. The world is going to be awesome. All the things I don't like to do, robots are just going to do for me. They're going to automate all the way. There's going to be this incredible period of time where they've automated all the way, all that kind of works we can do higher value tasks, and then they'll automate us away so they can do more higher value tasks. <laughs> I'm looking forward to sitting on the beach with you, my friend. Oh, that's, yes. that's all I'm saying. Yeah, We're beach gonna, winery. just going to retire and, and chill out, you that's know? That's the life. All right. That was the first ever AI rundown. If you think we should do keep doing this, hit us up in the YouTube comments. If you like the format of today's show, want to make this a regular thing, hit us up in the YouTube comments. And until then, we will see you real soon on Marketing Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history. Calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better. 